The turmoil in the NWO continued on April 6, opening the show with Randy Savage in the parking lot after a hit-and-run attack. WCW built the first hour on the follow-up to the story, hyping additional footage from the incident. In addition to that a big main event was announced with champion Sting defending against Nash who was gaining big momentum as a babyface in opposition to Hogan. The first opposed segment opened with a 4.5 to 4.1 lead for WCW for the hyped parking lot footage of Savage and a Red Viper, driving off with NWO members around him. Hogan teased the idea that he was the one who ran over Macho Man, saying that he hit a few speed bumps on the way to the arena. Two weeks away from the Spring Stampede pay-per-view, headlined by Sting vs Savage for the title, and Hogan and Nash teaming against Piper and Giant in a bat match. Vince McMahon opened Raw promising the reveal of the new and improved Stone Cold. Vince hyped a complete makeover of Steve Austin for later in the show after being in jail last week. The new DX run started with them in skits all over the building, basically copying most aspects of the original NWO with spray paints and attacking employees backstage. The real intrigue was how far they would go in pushing the envelope in the edgy product which ended with them pissing on the DOA motorcycles in the parking lot. With the close competition from the week before, both companies put on loaded star power segments one after another as every downtime could lead to viewers switching to the other channel. WCW had the momentum train of Bill Goldberg in a match against Hummer and Raven's flock members, along with a Roddy Piper promo coming right after the Hogan in WO segment. While Raw had DX coming right after McMahon, with Foley and The Nation with Rock against Owen following. Next on Raw was Mick Foley, cutting a trademark promo with him giving Raw its first win of the night and indirectly starting the feud to come with Austin saying that fans are not gonna see Cactus Jack again as all the damage he took was not worth it anymore. A week after the explosion of the nation, the build for the six months in the making Rock vs Farouk match was starting, with the nation attacking him arriving to the building. Rock was next in a pay-per-view caliber match with Owen Hart, which ended with China interfering. The placement of the segment was interesting as Raw was usually taking a commercial break before starting the war zone in the second hour. This time, the Rock vs. Owen match crossed over to the second hour with the credits immediately signaling the start of the hour with no commercial in between, in an attempt to hold viewers without an opportunity to switch to TNT during a commercial that was leading to Vince coming to the ring for the big reveal. Steve Austin came out in a suit, teasing the idea that he's a changed man before making sure that Vince knows that this is the absolute last time he's going to see him in a suit like that, in another classic Austin McMahon segment. While Steve Austin and the Austin McMahon dynamic was making a difference in their individual quarter ratings for some time, this segment signaled a significant change in a breakthrough for Steve Austin's status. The segment gained over a million viewers from the already near record level Raw audience watching, to draw a huge 5.6 rating, the highest rated segment in Raw history. Winning the quarter with a 5.6 to a 3.9. If you told McMahon before or during the show that he's going to break his viewership record and still not win, it would have been hard to believe, but somehow that's what happened. Things leveled up to normal viewing patterns but Raw was still in the lead for the next 30 minutes, with the Shamrock vs Marrow match, the Nation segment, and Taker's promo responding to Paul Bearer's Inferno match challenge, ending with Kane in the cemetery burning the graves in a strong segment that left the audience stunned. 
The WWF was now just a single quarter away from at least tying this week's competition after losing 82 weeks in a row. Nash came out for the main event wearing a Randy Savage t-shirt, saying that he knows it was Hogan who was responsible for the car attack, noting how the red and yellow colors of the car resembled someone's from a few years back, and saying that he might turn on him in their pay-per-view tag match. In addition to signing with Savage, the shirt was also an opportunity for Nash to take another shot at the company for the firing of Sean Waltman. During Waltman's time off with neck injury, Hall and Nash were often wearing his green six ball and WO t-shirt on TV. Nash said that he needs to be careful wearing somebody else's shirt, because if you do it he might be getting fired. While rarely having promo segments due to his character, Sting was routinely gaining big numbers for his matches and his title reign. The promoted match with two established stars with big momentum in a first-time ever main event for the title was expected to do the same, this time, the result surpassed even the high expectations. Going against Raw's main event of DX vs the DOA, the Sting vs Nash match and the angle right after, gained huge with around 2 million viewers to draw an all-time Monday Night Tours record 5.8 rating. At the same time, Raw lost over a million viewers for the duration of the last 15 minutes of the show. The combined 9 rating for both shows was the highest in history. While probably coming closer than at any point since the streak began, driven by a clutch record-breaking main event audience, WCW with a streak starting on June 17, 1996, won the competition for 83 weeks in a row now.